we are going to tie a uh, we're going to tie a fly for Chinook using these UV dragon tails. And I, I just want to think, I'm looking at a fly on my desk and I'm thinking if I want to tie it any different or not, but I think I don't. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's just a matter of getting your search image down. So I've got my 210 denier flat waxed mono. And I want my dragon tail. You know, it'd be simpler if I made it that long. Will I? Nah, I'll make it this long. I'm gonna cut it. And as I always say, I'm holding it tightly and I'm stripping out. Stuff is much like chenille, exposing the core. But I'm holding this part real tight. I don't want to take a chance on it coming apart on me. So I get the core wrapped down and I'm going to wrap back even further and get this locked in and wrap up over the material. There. Not going anywhere. So now here's one of the cool things. Cool things. Why is this cool? I don't know. I'm going to tie a little bit of bucktail in here. I'm going to cut a couple of chunks, get several chunks ready in advance. I'm going to tie in some bucktail to give a little bit of motion and a little bit of extra volume. I could, uh, and sometimes I just, um, wind in a craft fur brush. Let's see, I want this about that long. Maybe I'll do them nice and long. Sometimes I just put a craft fur brush and just wind a whole bunch of turns with a craft fur brush. Sometimes I don't. And this is one of the times I'm not going to So I really, I want to get this all the way around the hook shank. And I don't know if I'm smart enough to do it by spreading it around. So I'm going to tie in a bunch down here too, underneath. So between those, I ought to have complete coverage. So now, here comes the fun part. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to spread this out. Push it back. And try to get it spread all around. All around that. And I'm going to take a peek here. I think I kind of got it all the way around. I'm going to hold it back. And I'm going to try to build a thread dam in front of it. Now it's standing out pretty, pretty abruptly. I, I, want it, I want it to go back a little bit more, I think. But I don't want to wrap back over the thread. So what I'm getting at here is I want to do this hollow tie style. And this is a fly tying style that's really cool. And I'm very awkward at it, but I'm giving it an honest try here. And I think if you, if you wrap over this, it, it's going to hold those fibers down. If you do a real hollow tie version, it it stands up a little bit more. So that's what I want to do because I, I want to have that pulsating effect. Pulsation effect. So 
you know, for a guy who doesn't know how to do this, I think I'm doing okay so far. Everybody's got to start somewhere. So I'm going to put another pinch in here. And I'm going to try to spread this one around. I nearly cut my thread on the hook point there, but I nearly is a good thing in fly tying. It means you didn't quite do it. Although, it could be like I nearly tied a good fly too, so. So let's see if I can fold this. So I, I should, I, what I was do, I was looking for, I've got some really big tubes for tying giant saltwater tube flies, but I couldn't find them. So if you have them, you can push them back. You, you use them to hold the, the hair fibers back. So again, I'm trying to do a thread dam there. Wow, amazing. Okay, the gentleman I watched on YouTube said you need to have three dams or three chunks or something like that. So I'm gonna do that. He also said, if you think you got the right amount of material, deer hair, get rid of half of it. So I should probably be doing that. But there's probably a lot of things I should be doing. Try to spread that around without losing it. Oh, I'm about to lose it there. Okay, let's see if I can. The people that wind up being really good at tying these hollow fly, hollow fly style flies, whoa, they make some beautiful, beautiful flies. I don't know if this is going to be beautiful, beautiful, but I think it's going to, it's going to fish. Okay, feeling pretty good about that. Now, eh, I'm almost feeling good about it. I see a little gap here. So forgive me. I can't help it. How's this gonna work? How can I do this now? Doesn't make sense. But I think I managed. I just slipped that into the gap. Okay. Now, how do I how on earth do I want to finish this head off? First first of all, I think I want to get a little bit of uh, not there and so what I, what do I want to do I've tied this off with a purple head before uh, now what do I how do I really want to finish this you know you shouldn't start doing a fly video and not know where you're going. <laughs> but that's exactly... Oh, I know what I want to do. Come on. Here we go. I wanted some pink at the front of this fly. What I've got here... So you notice I've got no flash in this fly. 
And I am going after Chinook, so this is conceivably a weakness in my strategy. So I'm going to get some ripple ice fiber. This is kind of some strange stuff. But let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to put this around the fly and then draw it back all around. And since I don't, not quite satisfied over on this one side, let's get a little bit over here. So this is uh, ripple ice fiber, this is blue. Okay, now I want to try to figure out some way of making a nice little, ooh, I wonder if I want to use a hackle there. Probably not. I think a little bit of, ooh, first of all, I want to check something. Yep, it's UV. Whoa, okay. UV fluorescent. So now I'm a happy camper, so I'm gonna get a little bit here. Try to get it spread around. You know, great flies have to start somewhere. I think that is just, ooh, I think I need just a tiny bit more there. The tiniest little bit extra. didn't do that right. I got the fibers too short on the bottom side and they're gonna they're gonna stick out so I'm not gonna let that happen. What we've got going here is a perfect fly. I'm not gonna mess it up now. back over I just want to push it back from the front now I may want to I will want to I'm going to cover up that eye of that hook get a little bit of a taper there Cure. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to brush it. the looks of this fly. I gotta trim it just a little bit. Don't need to trim it on the bottom because that's really light and loose and that 
Schnook is going to grab it and that's the end of that story. So now I want eyes on there. So I'm going to Ooh, I'm going to put some chartreuse size on this one. Maybe? Nah. I'll stick with my... Well, maybe I will. Yep. Here are my super pearl eyes. So this fly... I'm going to fish this in the estuary. I'm sure you could fish it for tarpon too. You could fish it for all sorts of things. It's not going to go. It's it kind of have a kind of have neutral buoyancy. Um, let me make sure I can properly seat these eyes. It's not going to go down very far, so you're going to be fishing it within. Well, I won't go down very far unless you use a fast sinking line. So you can fish it anywhere you want to. Here comes my drop of gel. Come on. Oh, it's spinning around. Come back. Come back on top. If I had a thicker gel, that wouldn't happen. Which I will next time. Okay, one more eye. And we're about done. Okay, got both eyes on. Press gently. Clean off my bodkin so it isn't a mess. Extra. You always have a little extra trim after you get those eyes on. Okay, there you have it. A dragon tail Chinook fly. I hope you've had as much fun as I have making this up. Make up one that suits your personal tastes and the waters you fish. And get out there as soon as you can. Thank you.